If you've ever found yourself in the company of those who care about robot anime, and anime robots, you may have heard of the Zaku. But odds are, if you don't count yourself among us mecha-likers, you don't actually know what a Zaku is. The MSO6 Zaku 2 is perhaps the most iconic mobile suit from the entire Mobile Suit Gundam franchise, bar the obvious. The mono-eyed scuba diver Pineapple spends most of the original Gundam series getting shot, stabbed, beat up, blown up, burnt up during re-entry, and being thrown off of cliffs, but somehow manages to make it through it all still indelibly cool. In this video, I'm going to answer the fundamental question. What is the Zaku, and why does anyone care? So, the Mobile Suit Gundam television series and compilation movies tell the story of the one-year war between the Principality of Xeon, a militant group of rebel space colonies led by an increasingly fascistic royal family, and the Earth Federation, the extremely corrupt and nepotistic one-world government. The hero of Mobile Suit Gundam, Amuro Ray, finds himself piloting the eponymous Gundam, the first field-ready mobile suit created by the Earth Federation after Xeon attacks his home space colony. The Zaku, meanwhile, is the primary mobile suit, human-shaped, human-piloted mecha, of Xeon, commonly seen in the hands of Xeon's rank and file. It's the reason why the Federation develops the Gundam in the first place. It's established very early on that Xeon's mobile suits, and the Zaku 2 in particular, were making short work of the Federation's jets and tanks, and so they are forced to answer in kind with their own humanoid superweapon. Unfortunately for Xeon, the Gundam proves to be far and away a more technologically advanced weapon than the Zaku 2, uh, leading to an awful lot of, well, this sort of thing. As the 2 in the name implies, the Zaku 2 is actually the second model of the Zaku line, an advancement of the less commonly seen Zaku 1. The Zaku 2 itself has dozens of model variants. The most commonly seen model is actually the Emos 6 f though variants from the letter A to Z exist, largely to convince people to buy more model kits. But far and away, the most well-known variant is actually the Emos 6 s Zaku 2 commander type used to famous effectiveness in the hands of the Red Comet, Char Aznable. Odds are, if you've heard about the Zaku, you've probably heard about Char. The Zaku 2 is insanely popular amongst Gundam fans. A lot of that can be chalked up to nostalgia. It's the first mobile suit we see in the original Gundam series, and 40 years is a lot of time to let fans let their warm, nostalgic memories grow. Look at it this way. Gundam came out two years after the original Star Wars. How nostalgic is society as a whole about stormtroopers? Or perhaps more relevantly, TIE fighters? But the Zaku's appeal is more than just fond memories. The Zaku is unconventional. Where the Gundam was designed for moment one to be as toyetic as humanly possible, the Zaku, and all of its Xeon brethren, were never actually planned to be made into toys, though they certainly found their way over there. Their role was to be disposable enemies. The Zaku's name actually comes from the Japanese Zako, meaning inferior fish. Because they didn't need to try to give the Zaku kid appeal, designer Kunio Okawara was able to just express himself by making a robot that fits with the villainous role of Zeon. And with its singular spooky eye and stark military look, the Zaku certainly doesn't cast much of a heroic silhouette, but there's something oddly expressive to the Zaku, thanks to that singular recessed eye. It gives it far more character than the Gundam stoic glare. It's quite visually simple, but it's not boring. It's neat. The Zaku's design is actually quite utilitarian for a giant man-shaped machine covered in pointless pipes. Where the Gundams come across kind of ridiculous at times with their samurai affectations, Everything about the Zaku feels like it has a purpose, even to those pipes. Even if the design feels very much like a product of the late 1970s. The role the Zaku plays in the Xeon War effort carries this too. The Zaku wields fairly mundane weapons. A machine gun, a heat axe, an occasional rocket launcher, bazooka, or grenade. 
the entire reason that Xeon, a nation of impoverished colonies near the moon, are able to fight the entirety of the Earth to a stalemate stems not from a singular uber weapon like the Gundam itself, but rather from the fact that they were just the first to mass produce their glorified robo-tank. We see this taken to its extreme when the Zaku-2 is put into the hands of an ace pilot like Char Aznable. Even though the Zaku is vastly outclassed by the Gundam, to the point that much of its weaponry can't even put a scratch on it, Char is still able to put the Gundam's back against the ropes through skill and daring do alone. Its underdog status in battles against the Gundam just builds on its mystique. And even as the Federation starts fielding its own mass production mobile suit, the GM, and Xeon starts fielding more advanced models of its own, the Zaku still manages to hold its place and hold its own. And perhaps some of its appeal stems from the fact that, though Xeon is very much the antagonist of the original Gundam, we see that there are good people in Xeon, and it's made quite clear that the Earth Federation is often hardly better. The second Gundam series, Zeta, even takes the perspective of anti-Earth Federation rebels, one-year war veterans for both sides, who join forces to fight against the Federation when its tyranny becomes ultimately unbearable. The popularity of the original Gundam series, and in particular its more grounded, gritty setting, has resulted in many revisits over the years, giving plenty of opportunities for Zaku fan service. There's actually been multiple Gundam series starring Zaku-2 pilots fighting in the One Year War, though it often ends up going quite badly for them in the end. Even outside of the Universal Century setting that the Zaku originally appeared in, the Zaku archetype lives on in the myriad of alternate Gundam timelines and universes. Some of those realizations are a bit on the nose, uh, while others are more following in the spirit of the Zaku than anything else. As a longtime fan of Gundam, and the Universal Century timeline in particular, I am, of course, a big fan of the Zaku. My Xeon sympathies probably don't hurt either. Zig Xeon!